In this video, I want to familiarize you with the PySpark syntax. I'll cover some example code, but first let me caveat that it's not expected at this stage for you to understand the code that I'm about to show you. This will be explained in the upcoming videos. The objective here is to get you familiar with the anatomy of the code. So with that being said, let's jump in. In Databricks, the Spark object, which is a Spark session, is automatically available in your notebook. The Spark session gives you access to core data frame operations, such as reading and writing data, as well as operations such as filtering and selecting your data. You do not need to import these operations. So notice how I can use this Spark method called read to read data by specifying the format that the data is in, which is CSV, and the path to which I should load the data from and that is loaded into a data frame. And then on that resulting data frame, I can perform this filter operation to filter the rows. So I've then stored that resulting operation into a new variable, which is again storing a data frame. And then on that data frame, I'm using another data frame operation called write. This writes it as a file, specifically a CSV file, in the path you specify here. So these methods are built in to the Spark session. Certain functionality in PySpark is not available by default, and it does require explicit imports. For example, there are built-in functions that are part of the Spark SQL functions module that need to be imported. In this example here, I have imported the functions module as F, and then from the functions module, I've used the call function here. Similarly, from the types module, I've imported Spark data types here. So scrolling further down, as you've probably noticed, Spark uses dot notation to call methods on objects like data frames. So this code is just the same as the code in the top here. So in this syntax, I've chosen to split up each operation in its own line. You can also split up the operations in their own individual cells. So if I wanted to, I could just add a new code block down here, down here, take this one and move that here, take this one and move that here, like so. So now they're in their own cell. But because I've split up each operation, it's required me to redefine the variables. Alternatively, you can chain the methods together. This provides conciseness. So this single line is equivalent to this. So notice I have chained the methods using dot notation. So I have got spark.read.format.load. So this reads the data frame. And this performs the transformation on that resulting data frame. And then this writes the resulting data frame into a storage location. Both approaches are valid, but chaining is more concise. However, it does require proper formatting for readability. And when I chain these operations together, I don't have to define any variables. But by chaining the operations, it's difficult to tell if your code works as expected. So what you could do is initially split up each operation. And then once you're comfortable that it all works properly, you can chain it together like so. Another useful thing for formatting rather than spreading this across a single line, is to use a backslash, like so. So the backslash indicates a statement continues onto the next line. Without the backslash, Python would assume that the code ends at the new line. So this just makes this chained operation more readable. Great. So in this video, I wanted to give you a high level overview of PySpark's code structure. And I should emphasize again, don't worry if you don't understand the code. That's completely expected. We'll get hands-on and I'll teach you everything you need to know in the upcoming lessons. For now, the goal was simply to get you familiar with how PySpark code is structured. 